So in your textbook, which remember you guys have a digital version, this is chapter 11. You find it under resources. Um, we are covering pages 314 to 319. So that's a big chunk. Um, of course, you're going to get a little more detail if you read the book than if you just get my cliff notes, if you will. Okay, so here we go. First question up, why does blood move? Okay, so lots of good ideas there. Um, we're gonna do one more and then I will talk about that slide. How much do you think is moving every minute? How much does your heart pump in a minute? But the answer is five liters. So why does the blood move? To meet the body's needs, right? So um, there was some answers that included oxygen, taking away waste, um, I, I saw hormones, so that was really good. Um, nutrients, so blood um, is a transport medium. It's moving things, right? So it carries oxygen, nutrients to all of our body cells. In order for our body cells to make energy, right? We need glucose, for example. And um, cellular respiration produces carbon dioxide. We have other metabolic waste from breaking down different proteins. Um, so we need to get rid of those waste. And you were right just a couple of you, you move approximately five liters of blood in a minute. So um, remember our typical blood supply is five to six liters. So we might circulate our entire blood supply in one minute, depending on our heart rate. And we'll be measuring that next week. Okay, another question. How? So some of you already got started on your how. You might be able to expand on that a little bit. How does blood get to all the parts of the body? So a lot of you are mentioning the heart. A lot of you are mentioning vessels. Some of you are giving individual names like veins and arteries. I like this person used, um, they actually use the little heart icon. I like this answer here. The heart pumps the blood through vessels and veins and circulates blood and oxygen. It moves through veins and arteries and the heart pumps it. So the heart provides the pumping mechanism. It is the energy, right? Provides the force to move the blood through the entire body. The vessels, those arteries and veins that you mentioned, they provide the pathway. And you're right, gravity does a shift. A couple of you talked about gravity. Um, so actually this statement was already mentioned. So we'll keep moving. Just a couple more. Um, so what do you already know about the heart? So we all might know different things about the heart. What's our background knowledge on the heart itself? The average size is about the fist, good. It's made of cardiac muscle, good. Beats around 100,000 times a day, wow. Maintains blood pressure, I like that you added the heart there. This one I was gonna heart too, isn't it? So go ahead and read those, maybe you got you guys maybe could pick your favorite. Aorta, right and left ventricle, it delivers oxygen. Good, there's a few of us liked it beats about 100,000 times a day. It's on the left side of your chest. Do you think like it sits over here on the left when you say it's on the left side of it? Because we, we cover our, our lefts when we say the pledge. So you're right, it is made up of cardiac muscle. It's also made up of nervous and connective tissue. Remember, organs are made up of several different types of tissues working together to perform a function. It weighs about a half, maybe a pound. It is muscular. It's positioned between the rib cage. It's actually in the center of our chest, but it tilts to the left. Um, it's about the size of a clenched fist, and somebody knew that it pumped 100,000 times a day. Nice work. Okay, we're getting close here. The layers of the heart. So this is using your knowledge of suffixes, roots, and prefixes. Yes. So we said we were going to use uh, the prefix epi in every chapter almost, right? Epiphysis, epimysium. Peri we use in every chapter. You had a periosteum, a paramysium. Endosteum, 
endomyceum. So the endo told us something, the myo told us something, and the em told us something. So what do these different pieces and parts help us figure out? So if we know what each of those words mean or pieces mean, we're able to determine brand new words that we've never seen before. So though you've never seen endo, cardi, um, you've seen endo and you've seen, seen eum. And we know the root tells us something about the word. So rather than ask or myo, you have cardi. So what do you think of with cardi? So there's three layers to the heart wall, and then there's a sac that the heart is found within. That's these four words. Which one is the inner, the outer, the middle, and the sac? Peri, remember, means around. So this is the sac that surrounds the heart. We actually have to cut open the sac to reveal the heart. The epi, remember, epi is above or upon. So that is the outer layer of the heart wall. Myo refers to muscle. Cardi is the heart. And eums, remember, are tissues. So this is the muscle tissue of the heart. So it's the middle layer. And endo is our innermost layer of the heart. It's um, connective tissue that's lining the heart. Okay, so we're gonna talk about each of these. Here's that pericardium. Do you see how the sac is pulled away? Can you see that? And the heart is inside of it. So the heart sits in this sac. The sac is called the pericardium. Ooh, I need to shift my picture. The pericardium is filled with fluid. The fluid is called pericardial fluid. So remember, most of our fluids, they serve a purpose of like reducing friction, right? The heart is a muscle. It's beating. It's expanding and getting smaller, expanding and getting smaller. Imagine if it wasn't lubricated. It would be hard, right? for it to open and close, kind of like the hearts that you guys were handling the other day. Epicardium, so this is the heart. Um, this is the outer layer. So see, it's actually physically part of the heart. This is a pericardium. Notice it's actually separated from the heart. So the outer layer of the heart is the epicardium. Epi, above or upon, cardi, must, or heart, sorry, EM layer. Myocardium is the muscle layer. Look at how thick it is. Um, in the lab, you guys were pressing on the left and the right, and you were comparing the toughness, right? So what you were doing was looking at the thickness, and we'll cut them open, and we'll see that thickness of um, the thickness of the myocardium, the muscle portion of the heart right here. Endocardium is the inner lining. It's connective tissue. It is continuous with the vessels it is continuous with the valves. So it's like the same connective tissue makes up the separators between the chambers of the heart. It also continues on through the vessels and makes up the lining of the vessels, the arteries, the veins, okay? Um, sometimes you get endocarditis. Endocarditis can be caused by a bacterial infection that is perhaps in the blood and then makes its way into the heart. So I would imagine that would be, um, remember, itis is inflammation. So an inflammation of that inner lining of the heart. That would be quite painful. And because that, or that um, inner lining is, is continuous with the heart valves, if you had endocarditis, it would cause um, damage to the valves themselves. OK, so the chambers. So we were looking at the outside of the heart the other day, right? So now we want to look at um, naming everything, right? So the upper layers, the upper chambers are called the atria. We were looking at the flaps on the outside, they're called oracles, but it's representing chambers on the inside, those open spaces. These are receiving chambers, right? So blood is going into the heart through the atria, either through pulmonary veins or through some um, vena cava veins. So veins bring blood into the heart. Um, the ventricles are the bottom chambers. So when we cut them open, we're going to see that endocardium really well. This is the valve right here. So underneath the valve, the majority of the heart is a ventricle. Okay. So you have the left ventricle and the right ventricle. Notice the right is much smaller than the left. The right is only pumping blood to the lungs. The left is pumping blood to the entire body. So it's got to get 
from the heart up to the head against gravity. It's got to get from the heart to my big toe. So it's got to go a really long way. Going to the lungs, not so far, right? So that doesn't take a lot of energy. So the left has to be much stronger. Um, we identified the apex. The apex is that point at the bottom there. So we identified that apex last week or Monday, Tuesday, whenever we were together. Um, and then the inter in between is what inter means, ventricular. So literally in between the ventricles, you have the interventricular septum, like your nasal septum separates, this separates um, the two ventricles. Okay. You have two different types of valves. So in between the atrium and the ventricle, you have, as its name implies, atrial ventricular. It literally says that it's in between the atrium and the ventricle, right? So your AV valves for short. You have a tricuspid with three flaps and a bicuspid with two. The tricuspid is on the right side. I don't know if you can see a flap here and a flap here. And then the other flap would be coming out on the half that was cut away already. The bicuspid only has two flaps. The cusp is referring to the, the flaps. Two flaps make up the bicuspid, okay? The bicuspid is also called the mitral valve. Because the left side is such a more powerful um, side to the heart and works with much more pressure, um, often if there's a valve, problem, it's more likely to be on the left side than it is on the right side. It's more likely to like, I have mitral regurgitation, meaning that sometimes blood goes up through it and it's only supposed to go down. Um, so those are between the ventricles. The ventricles are pumping chambers. They push blood out. Okay. Then you have these chordae tendinae. So the valves, are anchored by these cords, heart strings they're called, chordae tendinae. So they anchor those valves to the muscle wall. So they're gonna pull them down to let blood flow through, and then they're going to release them, and they're gonna close back up, right? Here's those heart strings, those chordae tendinae. So we'll see that when we open up the hearts. The four heart valves control the flow of blood through the heart by opening and closing the heart chambers in a coordinated sequence. The two valves located between the atria and the ventricles are called the tricuspid and mitral valves. These valves facilitate the flow of blood as it moves into the ventricles from the atria. The other two valves are the aortic and pulmonary semilunar valves. These valves ensure that blood exits the heart correctly. Each of the four valves is composed of flaps called leaflets or cusps, which prevent backflow of blood in the wrong direction. So you might have seen a little bit um, of different structure between those two different types of valves. Um, the AV valves that we Off. talked about, they're pulling um, the leaflets open. And then um, the second valve is pushing um, blood pushes it open, more like a swinging door. Okay. Um, so those are called semilunar valves. That's the second one she was talking about there. So these are at the entrance of the arteries. So the aortic semilunar valve is guarding the entrance to the aorta. This, the pulmonary semilunar is gui guarding the entrance to the pulmonary artery. Okay. So pulmonary semilunar so the pulmonary artery is exiting the right ventricle. The aortic semilunar, the aorta is exiting the left ventricle. So as blood flows through, as blood is pumped through, it pushes those leaflets open and blood enters the atria and goes away from the heart, okay? You have a separate slide for this one. So today we just hit the anatomy. We're going to get into physiology and we're going to talk about circulations more another day in your Google world, because I couldn't figure out how to let you write on that. Um, you have a single slide to fill in for this. This is anatomy of the heart Thursday, 
Remember, you're looking at the heart anatomically correct. So its left is your right. Your right is its left. So the right atrium will be on your left side. The atrium are the top. You got a right and left. The ventricles are the bottom, right and left. The valves, you have the tricuspid on the right. The bicuspid or mitral, either one is fine, on the left. The pulmonary semilunar is guarding the pulmonary artery. The aortic semilunar is guarding the aorta. Blood is red, no matter what, blood is red. In pictures, they color blue and red to make it visual for you to show you deoxygenated blood. So the blue is typically blood coming from the body. It's already been used. The right side of the heart is receiving deoxygenated blood. It'll go to the lungs. It drops off its carbon dioxide. It picks up oxygen. It comes back. The left side of the heart is receiving oxygenated blood. And so usually this is colored in red. And then that sends oxygenated blood out to the body to be used. Okay. So you should be ready to turn in that exit slip. Good to go. Today's lecture is done. We're starting with just a minor amount of information. Um, to follow up, sorry for those of you who have AP and you just did a TED talk. <laughs> um, you're also going to do a TED lesson in this one. This is how the heart actually pumps blood. Um, so there's like four some odd minutes. You have a watch, a think, and a discuss. You don't need to do the dig deeper. Um, the think, it's kind of cool. Like if you get a question wrong, it has like a video clue. So you can click that and it'll take you right to the video piece um, where you might have missed the answer and it'll tell you the answer. So I thought that was pretty genius how they connect those together. So it's five multiple choice, three short answers, and then one um, little bit of a longer answer maybe. Okay, so that's all we have for our follow up today. You might choose to read the book on the pages that I indicated PowerPoint. Um, but other than that, you guys are all set and you are free to go. It's 9.15. We got out maybe 10 minutes early.